Hi folks, welcome back to Keith's Garage, a special Christmas welcome. Today is uh, Christmas Eve and uh, we're calling that you here from Canada and it's cold and it's snowing. I think we're expected to see minus 19 tonight, but right now it's not bad, it's about minus nine. And uh, we're carrying on with uh, Keith's Garage here. Um, I'm Keith and this is my garage. Uh, got a couple old Plymouths, or a couple old Mopars. I got uh, my 38 uh, Chrysler over there and this is my 38 Plymouth. And uh, as you probably know, I'm rebuilding the engine. So today, still not firing it up yet. We're inching closer every day. And uh, I'll teach you maybe, I don't know if there's a lot to learn in this video, but there's progress. And um, I don't know, maybe sit around uh, this evening and uh, pour yourself a Christmas cheer and uh, have a watch. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for subscribing. I appreciate it. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, all the best in the new year as well. And thanks for hanging out with me on Keith's Garage. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2022 to get uh, this car back on the road and driving. All right, here we go. Here's the next installment. As you guys can see, I've been just mixing up the colors a bit, going with some black and some gray, just to, I don't know, change it up. I think factory, just about everything was that silver gray color. I, the oil canister, I think, was always black, but I don't know, let me know what you think, just to mix it up a bit, you know? Make it look a little snazzy. I kind of like it. significant uh, step in my processes here. I'm excited to take the cover off this car. It's been a long time. Pull the engine out 13 months ago. We don't, we don't have any mice actually. It's time to get it out. Well, I'm happy to say all the work I've been doing, I must be making some progress because this is the first time I've moved this car and there isn't an oil puddle underneath it.
It's going to be a whole lot easier than when we took it out with the nose off. I think I'm going to be able to just put it in right there. I'm hoping so. I think so. pretty good. It's been a long time on that stand. So I want, I want to show you guys this. After you take out all the bolts to remove your flywheel housing here, you may not want to come off. And the reason is, you may not see them, but there is a dowel here on each side. There's one here and one here. So after you, uh, you take out your bolts, maybe the, uh, the flywheel, you could be trying to take it off while still in the car, get a punch. This is often just packed with grease and uh, road grime. Clean it out and push a punch in from this side and you can push the dowel into the flywheel housing it's nice and loose in the flywheel housing it comes out easily so push those in a little ways about halfway or so like that take my bolts out now i still gotta paint this but it kind of sits like something like that sits on the dowels like that. So we will paint this and get back in business. Well guys, it is Christmas Eve today, um, 2021. Snowing lightly out there. It's definitely a white Christmas here. Show you a little Christmas snow. Anyways, I've uh, tilted my engine on the stand here, the, the uh, leveler on the top there on an angle this way because I'm going to try and put the flywheel on here and um, I'm not really comfortable just bolting this to my engine stand that's a lot of weight now everything's just about on it's pretty heavy at this point and I don't feel comfortable having that engine stand mounted here and all that weight on these four little bolts so I'm not going to do that some guys build a, a stand I elected not to do that just because I can't see myself rebuilding another one of these in a long time. As much as I loved it, I'd like to. It's not the cheapest hobby to be throwing money at. So I've got my flywheel here. It sits like that in the, underneath the bell housing here. It does fit. Um, some people have asked about how I'm going to get nuts back on the back side of the crankshaft. If you look at the head of this bolt here, it's cut off square on one side there. And... Um, that basically rubs up in uh, this little step in the flywheel right here. And then you put a nut on the back side. <clears throat> so, like this. That's just right in there and it can't turn. But I can get behind it with a wrench and tighten them up, hopefully. I don't think I'm going to go full torque here on these. I'm going to put it back in, in the car and then torque them down I think I got it in there earlier it does fit there we go I don't want to get under that but it does actually sit on there so I can get a bolt in there and hold everything in place one I'm trying to do this under the car isn't fun. So I'm not going to even attempt to do that. I'm just noticing some of these bolts aren't, aren't lining up. That's 
weird. Does it only go on one way? Hmm. Well, just better look at that. Make sure I got the right flywheel. Pretty sure that's the one I took off there. More head scratching. All right, so the flywheel does only go on one way, I guess. I mean, it makes sense. It's it's balanced at the factory, I suppose. Um, I noticed there's some holes drilled on the uh, on the flywheel on the back side, down in uh, down this lower corner over here, and that uh, that's for balancing. So I guess it does. It, you know, you look at the crankshaft and it looks like all the bolt holes are even all the way around, but they're uh, they're not. They're out just slightly. So you can only put it on one way. I didn't know that, but it makes sense because it's balanced with the crank. Um, inside of there is my pilot bushing for my uh, input shaft for my transmission pinion. Make sure you replace that with a new one while you got this apart. It's in the end of the crankshaft. I've done other videos on it, but I, I guess I can talk about it. Some people fill that up full of bread, they say, or maybe, um, what else have I heard? Grease. And then tap it with a punch and it, it should push the bushing out. That didn't work for me. That did not work for me at all. Um, I even actually took a bolt and cut a groove in the edge of the bolt to put an O-ring on it to hold the grease in there to hopefully punch it out. It wouldn't come out. I ended up filing through the edge of the bushing on a spare crankshaft to try it and pull the bushing out. That worked. But I didn't want to do that on my crank that I wanted to reuse. I was worried about wrecking the surface in there. So I actually went and bought like a $20 little pilot bushing puller worked awesome. I could, I could fit it right in behind here in the bell housing with the clutch off and I was able to pull the bushing out and tap in a brand new one. So make sure you do that. All right, now you can see the flywheel bolts on the back side there into the crankshaft. So I can fit a nut on there and tighten it down. You can see how challenging it would be to change that rear seal with it in the car. Um, pull the, uh, the tranny, I guess. back off all the flywheel bolts, drop the flywheel down through the housing, the bell housing, it fits, it'll come out. Um, then you might be able to get your hand up top there to top half bolts of that, top half of the seal, I don't know. You know, it was one other thing, I was out uh, one day snooping around in a, I don't know, garage sale or something like that, and I saw this. I thought, I think I know what that is. You know what it is? It's a flywheel turning tool. Open it up and put it on your flywheel like so. And then I can grab it and turn the engine over. I'm gonna use that when I'm cranking down these bolts. I think, I don't know, I paid like, I don't know, 10, five or 10 bucks for it. And I thought, I'm gonna need this someday. And there you go, I'm gonna use it today. I'm gonna turn a flywheel so I can get each bolt on the bottom side down there tightened up. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna torque them all down here on the hoist because uh, I can't get good torque on them. I don't know what the torque spec is, but you know what? I'm just gonna give it all I got because you can't get a torque wrench up behind there anyways. So I'll uh, use my flywheel tool and get down there and get that done. So I was successfully able to mount the flywheel, laying it on there and just getting a bolt in. I got to use a pair of pliers to get a, yeah, a washer on, started on the bolt, and I held the nut and I just got started and I pushed the head in and sat in the flywheel groove, tightened it down just with an open-ended wrench. It's totally doable. I'll torque it down when it's in the car. I got to talk about safety here. Don't trust anything really to save your life. Don't put your body, any part of your body under a suspended load if you can. Um, uh, you can see a piece of wood block back there. They just be jammed between the cylinder and the beam of the hoist. That's mechanically, it can't come down there. The cell, don't, don't trust your life with a cylinder made in some factory where they're trying to do it as cheap as possible. Don't trust it. I, now that I've got one started, I can lower this down to the ground lower, just enough that I can work on it, but I'm not putting my head under there. I'm gonna actually have my hand under there briefly. If it comes down, it might hurt my hand. I guess it's a chance of that. Um, 
And the other thing that could happen is the chain potentially could fail. That's a very, very slim chance. Look at your safety chains, make sure nothing's elongated or looks like it's stretched or hooks aren't starting to come apart because they're overloaded or stressed at some point. Just be safe. So five holes going on, it can be done. I'm gonna lower that down and put in uh, the rest of the bowls to be a little, little safer. Looking good. I better put oil in this engine before I forget. I haven't put oil in the crankcase yet, but I'm getting excited. Not only because it's Christmas, but I'm gonna get this in the car soon. And uh, I better put some oil in there. <laughs> That'd be brutal. After all that work, <laughs> trying to crank the engine over and you got no oil pressure, and you're, oh, let's not go there. <laughs> You know, being as it's Christmas Eve, uh, I probably should go uh, go shopping for something for my wife. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take another pause, another moment here on my engine and uh, go Christmas shopping. I heard a funny uh, saying the other day; it made me laugh. It said, "Just because um, you know you chose to go Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve, you know, don't be mad at the staff in the stores because." Uh, it's not their fault you waited until Mary's water broke to go Christmas shopping. So, <laughs> better go do that. All right, we're, we're back from Christmas shopping. That's done. But I got some good news. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but in my videos, there's, there's no fuel pump on this engine yet. So a couple of things happened today. I went and got the mail when I was out. And um, from then and now automotive, my fuel pump kit, my rebuild kit showed up. So I can do that over the Christmas break. And this is really cool news. I got a letter in the mail today and it's from our local provincial uh, province of British Columbia Insurance Corporation. I applied for collector plates for my 38 Chrysler and it looks like I passed with flying colors. <laughs> That's exciting. That, uh, that means really cheap insurance for me, for my car. And uh, you know, they can be picky. I had to send them about, I think I sent them about 36 photos. I had to get them printed off and put them in an envelope and mail them down there. And they go through your car with a pretty fine tooth comb looking at the photos and they're pretty picky and uh, <laughs> i'm happy to say i passed that's awesome so i can go put plates on it and i'm not like i'm going to drive it in the snow but all right so i'm going to go uh, back to work here get this done let's get this thing in well folks that's it for today's video. And I think I'm just going to maybe take a minute to sit back and just take this sight in. Kind of a clean new engine. Man, it's rewarding. Uh, it's a bucket list thing for me, you know? Just uh, rebuilding a flathead. Man, what, what an awesome time it's been. And, um, you know, it's, it's time to celebrate. Um, for my American friends, I'm thinking of you guys tonight. Lots of American uh, subscribers, thank you very much. And uh, we got homemade cinnamon buns because it's Christmas. And my wife makes them every Christmas. So it's time to just sit back, relax, take it in, and say thank you again for subscribing. See you on the next one, guys. Oh, they're still warm.